Hello my Soccer Universe and welcome to the Premier League Eredivisie review. All I wanna say, that's the most positive I can say, Ajax champions again. Champions again. Uh, in all the two leagues Ajax is easily my favorite team in there so I'm also wearing Ajax uh, 35th time that they win. Talk about it a little bit later. I think in the Premier League it's less the action on the pitch than surrounding the pitch in, in, in a way that takes the action. It's of course the Manchester. I don't know. I mean, I hear called riots. I don't think it was a riot. Uh, mutiny, uh, protests. I think uh, mutiny, I think I like uh, best because this is exactly what they want. They want to get rid of the captain in uh, of Manchester United. The owners, of course, not the captain on the pitch. And so, yeah, the big game between United and Liverpool could not happen. And, yeah, I will talk a little bit about that. This is where I probably will spend the most on, on it. We had uh, in on the field, because of that, uh, of the, those protests, uh, Manchester City's title party was definitely uh, delayed, because if Liverpool would have gotten a point off United, um, City would have been champions after they win at um, um, Crystal Palace. Leicester dropping points, Chelsea picking up points, West Ham winning, maybe Spurs in the car conversation. So that part is not quite decided yet, so there is a little bit excitement there. Uh, I've, let's address the elephant in the room before we go into the game, um, although it's not the first on schedule. Uh, for the first time in a long time, and maybe as far as I hear, for a second time ever in Premier League history, due to fans. Uh, and you know, I know uh, English history didn't start in 92. I'm very well aware, uh, aware of it for me. It's all, I don't only count Premier League statistics. I find this is really, really, I find this actually really annoying if someone uh, just says, yeah, pre uh, the Premier League is the only thing that counts. But yeah, uh, in the build up, it was already said protest. The protest, of course, flamed up. Uh, due to the Super League, but the United fans were not happy with the Glazers. Uh, it's clear ever since they took over, but it has been kind of silent. But I think now in this current climate, we saw it last year in America already starting the protest for uh, social justice, which uh, is definitely a huge thing. But now people get more and more encouraged. You saw the Chelsea saw supporters by blocking off a game that could go ahead, it has, 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 has to be said, um, were very much um, a part, I don't want to, I'm still not saying that the reason, but they are part of uh, bringing down this whole Super League idea, which we already know was very well, a very, not well, <laughs> very badly uh, packaged and put out to, uh, very badly coordinated in every regard. So, I mean, the thing was ripe and you had the protests against the Caracas at Arch, Ar Arsenal and I think the United fans said, yeah, let's use the Liverpool game, the biggest game in England, to stage a protest against the Glazers, which we do not like and I totally can get that. I think as owners go, the Glazers are the worst kind out there. Not only do you buy the club by taking a loan and putting it on the club and then because you then sort of loan the money to the club, you take out the interest, which makes you a lot of money. That's the one thing. You also don't invest in, in, in anything. Uh, yes, you had you were riding out the last years with four currents, there was a Champions League, but uh, in the past... 10 years, rather meager for a team that actually should rightfully be way up there. Then add to it that your city rivals are suddenly the big boys on the block and you get a hell of an unhappy fan base. And what I hear, I have not been there, but what I hear, uh, Old Trafford is in bad need for some repairs and so on. So, uh, you know, it all adds up. This is just a money machine in Manchester United. It's just too big for its own good in this case. And you end up with an ownership situation. So I'm totally in favor of this protest. And I'm also even thinking, um, this protest probably didn't achieve any, any anything in terms of it. But if this would keep up and uh, people peacefully, and this is my key, peacefully protest, peacefully block off the stadium and, and so on, so that, that games can be played, that this is a real headache, maybe you have a chance. Maybe. Where I actually draw the line is 
if there's violence involved. I don't know how easy it was get to get into in, in the stadium. But what, what I hear, uh, I mean, flares being thrown, that's always already teetering a little bit on the edge. Uh, and then when I hear that um, balls were thrown at policemen, that, that you broke into the uh, rooms, you took stuff out of the locker rooms or even the offices. This is, I think, where the whole thing is a little bit teetering on, yeah, you lose a bit your cre 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 credibility. I think uh, if without that, I, I actually think it would one, be one of the biggest... Uh, positive fan headlines for the fan clubs but uh, it's extraordinary in itself it also puts the league a little bit into trouble because i think the only when i look at the SK, the only way that this game could still be played is this week but how do you do that now in in a way i mean this has to be very secretly arranged almost in, in order, 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 order to get this played or there might be other protests. So, as I said, it is a, it's a fine line. I, I totally can sympathize with the discontent. I think the Glazers are, of all the owners out there, I mean, Peter Lim for Valencia is also cutting it very close, but it's one of the most disgusting ownership uh, groups out there. And for that reason, I really would like to see them gone and, you know, people take take to the streets. And you, I, the thing is to keep it up and to keep it peaceful, which is really, which are the two hardest things to do. But if that could happen, I think they have a chance. So those are my few cents on, I call them protests. I actually like mutiny as well because it uh, fits Manchester mutiny. It is an alliteration, fits very nicely. On the field, um, Southampton against Leicester. Leicester dropping points were even a point, um, a goal behind through a Watt-Prowse Prowse penalty and it all started sort of good for them because Leicester got, got uh, sent off probably for last man tackle on VAR, VAR, VAR because in itself, uh, yeah, it, I, I guess he plays the ball but he goes a little bit reckless in there so I, I, I think the red card is just, uh, and then Southampton just hung back and hung in there at the end they had it to hang on because Evans in the 68th gets the equalizer and then there were pretty good good chances, uh, I think one by Vardy especially where I think Leicester needs to get the three points, now it's only one point and maybe Leicester fans are again a little bit on uh, the nervous uh, side of things. Uh, City against Palace, I mean, was one-way traffic. Um, the two goals came within two, two minutes, and I have to say, the finish by Sergio Aguero, uh, that was really, really, really sweet, and he's not playing all, although from what I hear, he's not very content of having to leave Manchester City after doing such great service to the club. But I can also un understand why they want to move on. And uh, weird enough, we don't really know where he's, uh, where he's rumored to go. I mean, I hear, of course, the Juventus is and, and so on. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Chelsea also. I mean, Monty needed to make a few good saves, especially for first half. But uh, Havertz scoring both goals, assists by Mount and by Timo Werner. And in both cases, you actually see also the value of Werner. Because the first one, he actually distracts the defense a little bit. Second one, he makes a really nice assist. And Harvard's coming good. I think you need to give those players a little bit of time uh, and not uh, expect the best from them all along. Of course, for Chelsea, it's all about the Champions League semi-final and whether they may, will make it to the final uh, there. Uh, Aston Villa, I, you know, compounds the problems for Everton. Let's put it there. At home, they are really bad. And now I think any chance of Everton finish in the top four or even European spot uh, really, really damaged by that one. Uh, we also thought that Villa could go in there, but you know, both are kind of mid-table teams. If they make the right decision, they maybe could go into the European spots contention, but it is really, really tough to get there. Uh, Oli Watkins and El Ghazi late give um, Villa the win, which overall probably was deserved in what I call the Kazoo Derby, because both have new sponsors, Kazoo. Um, other game that I want to pick out is uh, Spurs against Sheffield United, where uh, Gareth Bale scores a hat trick, and that's basically all. That Spurs will win against Sheffield United is not a surprise, but seemingly they looked uh, well doing so. So I want to have to mention doing. I think it was only the second um, hat trick for um, uh, Gareth Bale in the English top flight. So that's also uh, no all not worth his son scores the last goal, which probably was a nice, nice one of them and. Um, also has a goal this is out and yesterday haven't seen any highlights so that's why I'm mentioning West Ham come back from 1-0 down through two Anto Michael Antonio goals still in the first half 
to get a win over Burnley, which will keep them into contention. Because as we can see now, um, you know, City, it's only a matter of time. United are hanging in there, but it's now West Ham in fifth spot. Uh, give them a fighting chance, but um, still, it's Chelsea all the way. I think the top four are more or less set. I mean, even Leicester City now have a five-point advantage over West Ham, have uh, seven over Spurs, and we have and potentially we have, have to see how it goes with Liverpool. I think it still looks rather safe, although they have a pretty tough schedule coming up that also has to be there. So it might get tighter, but um, to me, those four seem to be rather set in stone. Um, since we have a few games in hand, uh, the, not much actually changes. Actually, that Villa goes ahead of our Arsenal. Everything else is pretty much staying uh, at the course, and they are Southampton and Brighton. Uh, switch uh, spaces there as well. As for the expected standings, it says as much. I mean, with the win, West Ham is now ahead of Liverpool. Yeah, uh, uh, probably I also have to adjust this there. The seventh spot is also a European spot uh, because we have Leicester and Manchester City in the FA Cup final. So um, if they stay in the Champions League, the seventh spot will go into the Europa League. So uh, the top seven will make it into Europe. Uh, there would be a pretty big game coming up between Manchester City and Chelsea, which could potentially already be a preview of a Champions League final. Um, that game is probably more important for Chelsea, although, you know, City could win the title right there and then. So uh, that might be interesting. West Ham against Everton is one that I want to pick out. Liverpool against Southampton because that's the race for the top spot. And, you know, Spurs have also a rather tough scale, so I don't really see them uh, going uh, much further than where they are. Definitely not top four, although there is a slight chance for that. Let's move Eredivisie. Um, Shock loss for Feyenoord against uh, Den Haag, where I thought this should is a big rivalry, but should be easy. Nope, was ev everything but a Z in and Vitesse keep their wins up to maybe uh, go for a European spot. A Z is still fighting for the Champions League and get a slight chance because PSV only played a 2 2 against Herrenveen, but uh, before that, Ajax 4 0 over Emmen. Timber uh, with a gr uh, goal that the gold goalkeeper found in Alea, Rensk uh, with a really nice team team goal and Klassen, both assisted by Tata to make it 4 0, rather, rather easy win. Celebrations outside of the arena this time. There were not, no, uh, as far as I could tell, there were no spectators in, in, in the stadium, which last week there were, or maybe there were a few, but you know, there were many outside similar scenes as we had in Milan. Um, yeah, COVID protocol and so on is a little bit doubt doubtful. But Ajax winning the 35th title, they are of course the class in the Netherlands. And then I can, you know, I can understand a Dutch soccer fan would most likely hate Ajax, but on the European car, car context, I really love Ajax. So um, there you go. PSV here in vain. Uh, Halilovic gave Herrenveen the lead uh, in the first half and then in crazy three minutes PSV turns it around and Herrenveen can equalize again and then there were chances on both sides to uh, win it. PSV actually this is really dropping points for them because uh, looking at the standings uh, it's now a one point between AZ and PSV. PSV is still the better team. Uh, 30 and 20 percent to reach the Champions League group stage so it's a uh, I put it that way because uh, the second place team has to go through all the players where I give them now 50% chance. Uh, it's not very scientific there, but uh, I say 50% there again, maybe even more. On the bottom uh, is still something to be, uh, still lots to be decided, uh, but I think Den Haag and Venlo will probably go down and let's see who will uh, join in the relegation battle. If you look at expect settings, you see that's where actually the most of the, um, uh, action still is because even for the European spot, uh, Heracles is probably not breaking into the top seven. There, where you have the playoffs. The next round also has a pretty huge game, but probably the m most meaningless in a long time between Feyenoord and Ajax. Although that m always matters, I think. Uh, if we go Willem Dwey against PSV, um, is important for the uh, especially for, for both teams one for relegation, one for getting into Champions League. And Z against Sittard, uh, probably an easy opponent for uh, Z. So yeah, that was it for me for this week. Let me know what you thought about all the topics, either the games or the protests at Old Trafford. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!